In the last video, we found that we need about 6,000 points. And because we were doing increments of 10, that's probably even overkill. But 6,000 points will guarantee us out to uh, at least five digits of five decimals of accuracy. And so one thing we didn't investigate yet is the, the limits of our integration. Now, we know we have the step function in there, so we don't even really have to start at a negative number. We can start at zero. But let's ignore that and go from some minus number to some positive number and pretend we have the, the full Gaussian. That'll just make this a little bit easier and more clear. But what are those limits? Our Gaussian technically goes out to infinity, and we need to investigate that. So one thing we need to think about if we fix our number of points to, let's say, 6,000, as we change our limits, maybe instead of minus 10 to the positive 10 like we're doing, maybe we go minus 100 to positive 100. And if we use the same number of points, we actually have much coarser resolution. And that's not good. And so really, what our convergence study has told us is not how many points to use, it told us how many points to use within that specified interval. So really, it's the that delta x parameter, it's the spacing from point to point that we want to preserve. And so let's go ahead and calculate that right here and ask, uh, what is final dx? So we type in our n value that our convergence study found, and that's about 6,000, we said, and that's probably way overkill because our increments were 10. So dx is xv minus xa over n. I'll leave the semicolon off. So I can copy and paste that over here, and we see a dx of 0 0.0033. So as long as we don't make dx bigger than that, we are good. And we can make dx easily just 0 0.003, and we're pretty good. Okay, so one thing we can do, since I don't want to run this code, but I don't necessarily want it to run. I don't want to delete it, but I don't want to run it. I'll put a big if statement, if zero, and then I need an end statement. And that section of code will not run. I'm not commenting it off. It's just a clever way, I think, of turning off a section of code. What I'm doing now is I'm copying that last section of code and then pasting. And we'll change our if to a one. And this is a convergence study now, but this is for our limits, right? Okay, so we don't need to pick limits in this way. Um, we're gonna have a loop determine that, but we do need to fix our resolution. And so I'll call that dx zero, and I'll say three e minus three. And so that is 0 0.003. And I made it a tiny bit smaller than 0 0.0033, and that's fine. We're, we're free to make it smaller. All right, uh, pick limits. So we need to know what to do with these. So m equals 100. This will be how many points in this loop we're going to have. So we're going to have big M number of things to try for these limits. So let's create an array called limit data or L dat. And we'll use the lin space command. And the smallest limit we might want to try is 0.1. So in other words, our integration will go from minus 0.1 to positive 0.1. Clearly, that wouldn't be enough. And let's go up to something like 100. That is way, probably way too high. And we'll know it if it's not too high very soon. So M number of points. And then we need to initialize our i dat and d dat the same way, but now we're not using an n dat because now we're looking at the limits. It's an l dat. And so we're doing the same thing, though. We'll be storing our integration and storing the difference from iteration to iteration. Now our loop, we don't need to check the length. We know what that is. It's going to be big M. All right, we don't need to get the next value of n. We're doing things differently here. So it's really going to be get limits. So xa will be minus what's in L dat, the mth element in L dat, and xb will be the positive of the mth value in L dat. And we don't need to calculate the m. 
Now to calculate the function, now we need to calculate n and dx and all that sort of stuff. So n, this is the number of points. So it's xb minus xa divided by dx zero. Now, n is number of points that needs to be an integer, but we're not doing anything here that would ensure that is an integer. So we should round this, and we always want to round up because we want, if anything, more points. Well, if we've changed that a little bit by rounding up, we need to readjust dx. So dx will be our range, xb minus xa, divided by the value of n we just calculated. So I really just typed in what was down here. Now we can go ahead and calculate our array of points and we can calculate the function. We can perform the integration. We can update the differences. And this all stays the same. We only need to change what's happening when we're showing these intermediate results. We no longer have n dat along the horizontal axis. We're going to have l dat. So I will replace n dat with l dat. All right, uh, we don't really know what to do for our y-axis limit, so I'm going to comment that out. Let's go ahead and run this. Oh, we don't want this down the bottom either because uh, we copy and pasted that. Let's go ahead and run this. Now, remember what we're doing. Oh, and I forgot to change the x label. <laughs> so this is no longer n. This is limit. All right, let's go ahead and run it again so we don't have n down the bottom. That'll bug me. My, my OCD will flare up. <laughs> All right, so remember what we're plotting here. We are plotting the value of the integration as we're increasing our limit. So if we grab a number like 30, the way we interpret that is we're performing our numerical integration from minus 30 to positive 30. So we can see, yeah, our, our integration is flatlining at the, the 0.8862 kind of value. And but really, it's the increments we want to look at. And what we see is this really sort of flat lines at you know, probably six. I might call it 10 to be safe, which is what we've been using. So coincidentally, uh, we got that pretty good. So we can keep our limits at the minus 10 to positive 10 without much issue. All right, then the very last thing, once we've determined that, we now know the limits. We know the resolution. We're ready to perform the final integration. So let's go up here, make that a zero. We don't need to run that. And well, we can go up to the top. And we know that we're good with the minus 10 to positive 10. N needs to be 6,000. And that should be it. If we run that. Here's our integration, but we're not showing all of the digits that we want. So let's go ahead and put in a display. And we'll say this is the converge result. Converge result. And then we'll use the num to string. And so the number we're displaying is the i naught. That's the integration. And now we did not ensure convergence out to 10 digits, but let's for fun, let's display this out to 10 digits. So we would do something like a 12.10F. And the first one's number of characters, number of decimals, and that's floating point. And we can go ahead and run that. And there is our converge results. And we did this, we know we're accurate out to five digits. So I can highlight these or five decimals. One, two, three, four, five. So in my homework, if I was being asked for five digits of accuracy, I would report 0.88623. So I hope this was helpful. I hope this uh, helps you take better control of the accuracy of your numerical integrations. And yeah, I hope this was helpful. I'll see you in a next video sometime very soon.